Hey guys, welcome back. With the launch of Halo 4 on PC, the MCC is officially complete on all platforms. And so, we're going to celebrate the way that we always do when a new game drops, by diving into the rather mysterious lore behind all of Halo 4's multiplayer maps. However, these maps are going to be a little bit different to the ones that we've covered so far. So, with Halo 4, 343 officially canonized Halo's multiplayer as war game simulations. Think the VR training for Metal Gear, but for Spartans, not for next generation special forces. However, despite the fact that all the maps your multiplayer games take place on are simulated, the maps themselves do actually exist. UNSC science teams create scans of real world environments to be later recreated in the war game simulations. So every map and location that we're going to look at today is real, it does exist, it's just that the version that you're playing on in multiplayer is just a simulated recreation of that real environment. Hopefully that makes sense. So before we start, just two very quick things. Number one, don't forget to check out the new merch from glamorous garments to vessels for your finest of liquids. And also, I'd appreciate it if you'd go and check out my buddy Wisefish's channel once you're done with this video. He's been a massive help this year, helping me edit a lot of my videos. Honestly, half the videos that I've made this year would not have been possible without Wisefish. And he also puts out some fantastic content on his own channel too, so once you're done with this video, go and check him out. The link is in the description. Right, let's get this show on the road. On the very edge of human-occupied space lies Erebus 7, home to abandon, an eerie, foreboding forest, at the heart of which lies a desolate only research outpost. Something about Erebus 7 appears to fascinate the Office, who have established multiple research facilities on the planet. Perhaps this has something to do with its human-friendly atmosphere, or its extremely hostile indigenous wildlife, or the ancient secrets hidden within its dense forests. But it's clear that its natural inhabitants think otherwise. In 2557, Oni mysteriously lost contact with all of its research teams on the planet, and the remote contact teams who were sent in to investigate found nothing but quiet, dead laboratories, their curators gone without a trace, leaving nothing but their strange specimens. Creatures, likely ancient, their ancestors, the puppets of parasites. Something about this mass disappearance really spooked the office. Immediately following the sit rep from the contact teams on the ground, only higher up suspended all research on Erebus 7, and appear worryingly hesitant to return. Whatever lurks in these dark forests is not to be trifled with, no matter the prize for doing so. Adrift above a gas giant being pulled towards a certain doom is the CAA Heavy Burden, an ex-mining vessel that was refitted as an ordnance transport ship. Sadly though, during the Battle of Kolo, the ship sustained significant damage, likely to its navigation and propulsion systems, and as a consequence, it is slowly being sucked into the gravity well of the gas giant beneath, where it will eventually meet a fiery death. However, despite its death clock ticking faster by the minute, its automated onboard systems continue to operate undisturbed, executing their operations in an eerie act of ignorance, unaware that it's only a matter of time until they cease to exist. The perfect example of this is the robotic systems at the centre of the map that are still proudly constructing the runting Yggdrasil Mark II D Megamantis atop a podium all the while rapidly plummeting to a certain doom. Complex, or as it's known by all in the UNSC, Galileo Base, was a UNSC research facility on the northeastern coastline of Requiem's largest continent that was built around a foreigner artifact that scientists were excavating. Because of both the sensitive nature of their operation and also the several hostile factions vying for control of Requiem, only enforced a persistent field resilience mandate on all of those stationed there. This mandate required scientists to maintain on-site weapon caches, optimize site layout to meet only spec for defensive emergencies, and retain an escort of well-trained military personnel should the base fall under attack. The worries only had that led to them enforcing this mandate were well-founded, however. 
In February of 2558, the base came under attack from Jilam Dharma's forces, who were after an artifact known as the Didact Gift that the UNSC had retrieved and was storing at the base. Fireteams Crimson and Majestic managed to successfully defend the base, however, preventing both a nuclear reactor meltdown and also extracting the artifact in the process, denying the enemy their prize. Erosion is the first Forge canvas that we'll cover today. It's based on a moon, referred to as Eudemon X49-05, that was discovered by human pioneer groups following the Human Covenant War. During the war, humanity lost a significant number of its colonies, and so, in the years following, the UNSC dispatched advanced pioneer groups to survey potential new inhabitable worlds, one of which luckily stumbled across Eudemon. However, many concerns remain regarding the moon's structural integrity. If erosion is one of many swampy cave systems lying just beneath the surface of this rock, it may not be the safest moon to try and colonise. Exile is a site where a valiant few turned certain doom into prosperity. During the Human Covenant War, the UNSC Diadochi, an ammunition ship commissioned by the UNSC Navy, violently crash-landed on a previously undiscovered planet just outside of one of the UEG's interplanetary trade routes. Those lucky few who survived the crash managed to salvage provisions from the wreckage and turn it into a makeshift shelter in which they lived for years. By the time rescue and recovery teams finally arrived, the marooned crew had created a bustling, healthy community, thriving in the ruins of their ship. Following their rediscovery, the planet they crashed on was named Partition, in reference to the inspiration the Navy took from ancient Greek history when naming their ammunition ship. High up in the skies of Requiem sits Haven, one of many harmonic resonance platforms that once hovered among the clouds of the Shield World. These facilities played crucial roles in the maintenance of the world, facilitating the monitoring and management of its solar preservation system, which, in layman's terms, means that it was responsible for one of the miniature artificial stars that illuminated the interior of the Shield World, baking it in false sunlight. It goes without saying how crucial sunlight was in maintaining the natural life that inhabited the interior of this world, and without the Haven facility and the other elaborate facilities like it, Requiem's surface would have been a dark, dead place. However, the Haven facility in particular may also have a more important yet still unknown purpose. When the Master Chief interacted with the Librarian's imprint when she accelerated his evolution, she did so on the edge of the Haven facility. Now, whether this facility in particular harnessed some ancient power that the others did not is unknown, but it definitely bears theorising. Impact, the second Forge canvas, is in fact an only archaeological site on a remote asteroid, drifting through unknown space. The reason for setting up shop on such a seemingly mundane rock is, quite possibly, cataclysmic in its importance. In 2547, one of their patrol drones recorded a particularly violent meteor collision, and the research site was quickly set up to investigate. Upon inspection, researchers were baffled to discover that, in fact, there was something inside the meteor that somehow survived the impact. An object of a known origin. However, their most significant discovery was yet to come. Upon further investigation, the researchers made a significant discovery. The object, the artifact, predates even the earliest of foreigner artifacts. Those few with the clearance to know of such truths now speculate that this artifact may be ancient human, or even precursor in nature. Both are incredible prospects, but if the latter is the case, this strange artifact could change the course of human history. In the northern polar region of the planet Concord is the Longbow Station, an abandoned mass driver facility perched on one of the pole's arctic shores. The frigid climate combined with Concord's unique gravitational conditions made this the optimal location to build a station intended for launching relay scanners into deep space. 
Prior to the Covenant War, the United Earth government primarily used this facility to launch these deep space monitoring relays in an effort to study far-flung star systems not yet explored by humanity. However, when the planet fell under Covenant assault in 2551, the station was likely abandoned, its inhabitants either fleeing to the safety of the inner colonies or perishing in this arctic tundra. Right fellas, before we continue with today's hefty dose of lore, a word from the sponsor of this video. Good old Raycon. So, given that humanity just seemed to have collectively decided that Christmas now starts in November, that means that holiday season deals are already hitting us harder than Halo 4's ending hit our feels. Oh, wait, was, was it still too soon? Sorry. And Raycon are no exception. Now's the time to get the best deal of the year on Raycons. Just go to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia, or click the link in the description to get 20% off your Raycon purchase. With everyone working from home thanks to the flood, the Raycon Everyday E25s make for a bloody good holiday gift. Their peachy price point at around half the price of other premium wireless earbuds while still sounding just as good, make them so good for working from home, for working out, or of course, getting comfy in front of a roaring fire, listening to a 5 foot 6 powerhouse of a British man whisper sweet lore into your ears. Lore that sounds even sweeter through the everyday E25s. And as well, their 6 hours of playtime and compact, comfy, noise isolating fit make them perfect for long periods of use. However, this deal is only available for a limited time. So, head on over to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia, or click that link in the description to get 20% off your Raycon purchase, and treat yourself or a friend this holiday season, which I refuse to believe actually begins until December 1st, but you know what? I don't make the rules. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring the video, and now, let's get back to the lore. Most foreigner constructs are known to stand the test of time like nothing else the passing of a million years, barely aging them a second. However, the aptly named Meltdown facility is one of the few exceptions. Built on a mysterious foreigner moon, this large facility once powered the foreigner war effort against the ancient parasite, but in the years following the firing of the array, has fallen into disrepair. Dangerous disrepair. The failure of the maintenance systems that sparked the collapse of this facility have also begun to melt the ice on which it was built. These freezing temperatures were once harnessed to control the reactor's intense heat, but it's clear the meltdown of this facility has broken the frigid control the ice once had over it, and in some time, what was once an icy tundra will likely morph into a blistering leak. This curious gorge, known to some as Two Giants and to others as Ragnarok, was a site of much interest to the UNSC on Requiem. The two giant beam towers on either end of the gorge are not unique to this gorge, nor this installation in fact. Although their purpose is still mostly unknown, very similar towers have been spotted on various Halo installations, Shield Worlds and also the Ark where they're commonly located in gorges such as this, so they can utilise the environment's natural harmonics to amplify their signals, fired into deep space. According to the mysterious Foreigner AI system, Catalog, the template for this valley was reused on multiple installations to the specific requirements of its pattern weaver, or creator, or at the behest of random variables of the template. During the UNSC Infinity's Requiem campaign, the Ragnarok Gorge was the site of a conflict between Fireteam Crimson and Jullum Dharma's forces. A UNSC science team, Mountain Squad, had been deployed to the valley to investigate a signal picked up by Galileo Base. However, they were shot down on their approach and marooned in the valley. Not the first time a gorge like this has experienced a crash landing. Fireteam Crimson were sent in on a rescue op, however all the scientists were sadly killed before they could be evacuated, leaving Crimson to investigate these strange communication relay towers themselves. Ravine is the third canvas map in Halo 4, and one that possibly hides an immense secret beneath its quaint surface. 
During the Requiem campaign, Oni dispatched a group of research teams on a number of highly classified expeditions to this part of the Shield World to try and understand the purpose of these massive towers. However, following a series of deep sensor seismic scans, they discovered that these structures were far more than just towers. They were in fact the tips of infinitely larger constructs hidden beneath the ocean. Current theories posit that these spires are rampart-like towers, acting like automated battlements of gargantuan foreigner castles, swallowed by the ocean and the passing of eons. If so, it's almost impossible to visualise the raw scale of the castles that these ramparts were designed to defend, and horrifying to imagine what the foreigners were defending this castle from that required such vast and awe-inspiring defences. Solis is a map named, very ironically, it's set in a foreigner stellar engineering facility on the edge of an oceanside cliff face on an unknown foreigner world. These facilities played crucial roles in the maintenance of foreigner regions of space and were run by foreigner stellar engineers, referred to by some as plasma jockeys, who were burdened with the vital role of preventing the death of certain stars, an example of which can be seen above the Solis facility. The jockeys use these facilities to prevent stars in their systems from going supernova, a task that was not only incredibly difficult, but also incredibly perilous. The vast amount of energy involved in sustaining a dying star made this process almost impossible to pull off. It was rarely entertained, only in the most dire of circumstances, and even more rarely was it executed successfully. Vortex is, based on theorization by Oni personnel, a vast ancient structure that harnessed Requiem's torrential winds for power. A technology that, if harnessed, could revolutionize human power production. During the Requiem campaign, the Cyclone facility, as it was referred to by the UNSC, was the site of much conflict. Initially, it was used as a Covenant supply store before being destroyed by Fireteam Crimson. However, it was later retaken and became home to multiple plasma artilleries. Fighting Crimson and Kodiak were once again dispatched to the area and successfully cleared the Cyclone of all enemy presence. However, following the abduction of Dr. Halsey from the Infinity, Crimson once again returned to Vortex, following reports that Halsey had been using it to bounce her transmissions. The area had been, once again, taken over by the Covenant. But after further fighting, Crimson once again regained control of it. Harvest, the first of Halo 4's 12 DLC maps, is set in the Tiara Space Tether Complex on the planet Harvest, home to the Tiara Space Elevators that played a vital role in the Covenant's initial invasion of the planet. Given that Harvest was an agricultural world, this space elevator complex and others like it were key in exporting the grain harvested here throughout the colonies. However, when the Covenant arrived, these facilities would be repurposed in a rather sinister way. What was once used to provide sustenance and life to billions among the stars became a conduit for transporting alien troops and supplies onto the planet allowing the Covenant to achieve their first major victory over humanity in what would be a long and bloody war. Located on Muroto, one of the moons of the planet Kaiseti IV, the orbit of which was the site of one of the first major battles in the Covenant War, Shatter is a facility created by Materials Group, the division of the UNSC responsible for the creation of Mjolnir. This grim, dark, and rather moody place was once a mining facility, no doubt where materials group would harvest rock and metals to later be used in highly experimental military hardware. However, excessive volcanic activity on Miroto seems to have concluded their mining operation. An operation that, if the surroundings are anything to go by, had been underway for quite some time. As the name implies, wreckage is the site of multiple large vessel crash sites, the carcasses of both a UNSC Paris-class frigate and a Covenant Lich lie on this cliff face. However, what brought these vessels down was more than likely not a naval conflict. Rather, it's more than likely that the large spires off in the ocean had something to do with it. 
It seems these vessels stumbled across the ancient Maginot Line, of which this planet is part of. The Maginot Line was a large defensive front set up by the foreigners to defend their core worlds from the Flood. It was, and still appears to be, made up of numerous line installations that utilise a number of defensive measures to prevent any foreign vessel from passing. These two ships crash-landed on Line Installation 9 through 12, and were the unfortunate victims of an ancient defence mechanism designed as a last-ditch barrier of protection against the Parasite. However, by the time the foreigners had to fall back on these installations, they knew the Parasite had already won. Too much of the galaxy had already been consumed for these defences, as effective as they may be, to prevent the inevitable. Although it is interesting to note that they still protect the Orion Arm to this date. Perhaps they'll prove useful in the wars to come, or, God forbid, when the Parasite chooses to make its grand return. Landfall is a shipping port in Casba City on the planet of Tribute. Prior to the Covenant War, Tribute was a hotbed of insurrectionist activity, with a number of anti-insurrection operations being conducted in its cities. Terrorist activity aside, it was also a beacon of commerce in the inner colonies, with the shipping port of Landfall being one of likely thousands scattered across the planet that dealt with imports and exports and off-world transportation of any and all kinds. However, as seen off in the distance, Landfall is set during Casba City's aggressive invasion by the Covenant in 2552. Evacuation of the city was conducted through the port, as evidenced by the civilian transport craft docked nearby, frantically running civilians off-planet, likely to the safety of a nearby transport ship, before returning to pick up more. The few survivors of this event tell a heroic tale of a team of Spartans who put everything on the line to defend Casper Station long enough for civilians to evacuate. Although these Spartans ultimately fell in battle, they were successful in defending the port, and those who survived because of them will never forget their sacrifice. Orbiting the ancient human world of Sothra Hakor is Monolith, an ancient monument built to honour the warrior servants who fell in battle with the ancient humans, a bloody, hard-fought victory for the Foreigner Empire. The monolith itself is built upon an asteroid, one of many in the belt that surrounds Sothra Hakor. In the centre of the site is a strange hologram, vibrant and rather alive, likely communicating information and transmitting data to installations beyond our comprehension across the galaxy. Or perhaps this hologram is something of a cenotaph, a beautiful and incredibly foreigner display of respect for their fallen warriors. Skyline is a map with a literal name. Visible from the balcony of this high-rise platform is the skyline of the city of Mindoro, on the planet of Cascade. The site itself is the under-construction 512th floor of the Nova Austin Station, a new space elevator under construction by Lethbridge Industrial, part of which is visible once again from the balcony. This floor specifically is located in Area A06 of the station, which clearly is an enormous tether, likely to be used for all manners of transportation – commercial, industrial, and military. Construction of this elevator in particular began in 2553, following the end of the war, likely due to the post-war boom that Cascade saw as life returned to some degree of normalcy, albeit temporary normalcy. Although its construction is not yet complete, departure boards seem to show outgoing trips from Mindoro to Casper City on Tribute, to Elysium City on Eridanus 2, and to New Albany on Draco 3. However, perhaps this station has had run-ins with fugitives and criminals in the past. I mean, why else would there be an AV-14 Hornet patrolling above with its searchlight shining bright? Located within the Savaron Highlands of the planet Oban is Daybreak, a map named after a United Earth Government operation that takes place in the area. This Highland region is home to a number of Oni bases and sensor relays, which is where the United Earth Government's Operation Daybreak is based. However, we know nothing of the details or goals of this operation. Floating above this otherwise rather plain valley is the UNSC Aegis Feet, a Strident-class heavy frigate. Perhaps its presence is linked to Operation Daybreak, 
or maybe it has something to do with the UNSC Navy's tendency to use this area as a staging ground for classified military campaigns in neighboring star systems. Outcast takes place in one of the many insurrectionist outposts scattered across the galaxy. This one situated in the caverns of Talitsa, a known hotbed of insurrectionist activity. Winding throughout this desert canyon is a dusty, heavily worn road, besides which are a plethora of insurrectionist structures, likely storing weapons, equipment, rations and the like, along with guerrilla style tunnels carved into the rock for ease of access. Occasionally, a freighter ship docks on one of the landing pads, probably ferrying supplies between similar bases scattered throughout the desert, on the horizon of which is Vitaly Evna, a massive ringed gas giant, the colours of which blend in almost intentionally with the browns and beiges of the desert rocks and sand. Perdition is located within arguably one of the most dangerous things in galactic existence, a thermonuclear reactor undergoing a catastrophic meltdown. The facility itself is the Pilvros Municipal Support Facility on New Carthage, a facility that contains both the nuclear power plant and also a water treatment plant. Given the monorail service, which is still for some reason active that passes through the facility, it's clear that this plant was once a significant employer of workers who lived in its city and the neighbouring regions. However, its meltdown was so catastrophic that the entire city had to be evacuated, and so everything in the plant is exactly where and as it was left by those who fled when the warning sirens first sounded. Before the reactor went fully critical, a team of scientists were sent into the site to create environment scans for later study, to try and help nuclear workers understand what went wrong and, more importantly, how they can prevent such a nuclear outcome in the future. Unfortunately though, the inhabitants of this city will likely never be able to return to their former homes following this disaster. If Chernobyl is to remain uninhabitable for the next 20,000 years thanks to its meltdown, it doesn't bear thinking how long it'll take for an area affected by a meltdown this bad to recover. Perhaps by the time it does recover, the infamous 21st century video game Ringworld Limitless will finally be on store shelves throughout the colonies. One can but dream. The fourth and final canvas arena in Halo 4 is Forge Island, referred to as the Great Anvils by the Infinity Science team, who saw these islands as some of the most remarkable features of Requiem. Little is known of these oddly flat rock formations besides that they resided in a peninsula southwest of Requiem's smallest continent. Perhaps, like the spires found in Ravine, they're just the tip of the iceberg and much larger rock formations exist beneath the water, but we'll never know for sure. Despite UNSC training instructors' love of the pit, favouring it over other training arenas thanks to it being a physical arena as opposed to a virtual arena, the Pitfall facility, identical in almost every way to the pit, was remade for wargame simulations. Pitfall is set in the now abandoned UNSC Thorenberg Combat Training Facility, possibly one of many like the pit to share this layout and design. Whether this is due to its proven effectiveness at training soldiers is unknown, but regardless of how beloved and effective this arena layout may be, it was for some reason abandoned and left to be consumed by the sands of time, a decaying, lost imitation of its now superior brother. Why it was abandoned is unknown. Perhaps it was the Covenant, Perhaps it was budget cuts, or perhaps real-world training really is surplus to requirement in the era of VR training. And so, here we are at the final map of today. Vertigo, a UNSC weather research site on a rocky beach on the colony world of Tessera. Given Tessera's extreme volatile weather and gigantic oceans, it was the perfect place for the UNSC to establish an array of isolated facilities intended for weather research and, possibly, weather manipulation. I mean, why else would a military body be researching the weather? However, much like the weather it was set up to investigate, the facility is rather unstable and has several exposed areas that, if impacted, release a large EMP blast. Whether this is an unintentional flaw of the design of these structures, 
or a way that the researchers at these stations managed to harness the violent maelstrom off in the distance is unknown, but if it's the latter, the UNSC may have a devastating new form of weaponry on their hands. And so, that's the mysterious lore behind all of the Halo 4 maps. If you made it this far through the video, then thank you very much, my friend. Perhaps a like and a subscribe, if you feel so inclined. Or perhaps check out my vessels for the finest of liquids. But with that said, that's going to do it for today's meaty chunk of lore. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the support over there, as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.